Churchill was educated at Harrow School, and there is a general belief, which he did nothing to discourage, that he was something of a dunce at school. <clears throat> and indeed, Churchill played on that for effect. In 1946, he was given an honorary degree at the University of Miami, and he said, I am surprised that in my later life, I should have become so experienced in taking degrees. <laughs> when as a schoolboy, I was so bad at passing examinations. <clears throat> in fact, one might almost say that no one ever passed so few examinations and received so many degrees. <laughs> From this, a superficial thinker might argue that the way to get the most degrees is to fail in the most examinations. This would, however, ladies and gentlemen, be a conclusion unedifying in the academic atmosphere in which I now preen myself. And I therefore hasten to draw another moral with which I am sure we shall all be in accord, namely that no boy or girl should ever be disheartened by lack of success in their youth, but should diligently and faithfully continue to persevere and make up for lost time. Now, Churchill was not a dunce at school. He won a school prize for reciting by heart 400 lines from Macaulay's Lays of Ancient Rome. He wrote an essay on the future history of an attack on Russia. Anyone who can do that is not a dunce. At Sandhurst, he was near the top of his class in military tactics and strategy. Perhaps the truth is that he did well at those subjects he enjoyed while ignoring the rest. Now, upon leaving school, Churchill joined the army and was posted to India. In 1896, when he was nearly 22, <clears throat> as he says in his delightful autobiography, My Early Life, in my view, one of the most attractive autobiographies in the English language, the desire for learning came upon me. I began to feel myself wanting in even the vaguest knowledge about the many large spheres of thought. He sought, as he was later to put it at Miami, to make up for lost time. And he asked his mother to send him books, beginning with the 12 volumes of Macaulay's history. When the books arrived, he devoured them, reading for four or five hours a day, beginning with Macaulay and Gibbon, before going on to Plato's Republic, Aristotle's Politics, Schopenhauer on Pessimism, Malthus on population, and Darwin on the origin of species, together, as he says, with other books of lesser standing, and then a number of books on religion, which had the effect, I think, of making him doubtful about the literal truths of Christianity. He was later to say that he was a buttress of the Church of England from outside rather than a pillar from within. <clears throat> 